This is Fernando Erdi speaking, introducing the fourth of the sequence of thematics we presented in this uh, series on hydroclimate risk on cultural heritage. We're going to talk about risk mitigation engineering, uh, which are the actions we can put in place to manage and mitigate risk. We're going to we're not going to introduce and, and explain again structural versus structural measures as a way for um, talking about a very important and actual topic, gray versus green measures. So first of all, let's recall the three concepts and components of risk. We have hazard, we have exposure, and we have vulnerability. The combination of the three is uh, supporting the assessment of the intensity of the risk that can happen on a, on a region, on an asset, or on a urban system. So the mitigation actions are the ones that are able somehow to manage, increase, decrease, we're going to talk mitigation, so decrease one of the three components. Structure and structural measures, as already introduced before, are mitigation actions we can put in place. The physical measures, the structural measures, the fissures, uh, the physical constructions uh, that we may put in place uh, are designed and implemented to reduce or avoid uh, possible impacts of hazard. So engineering techniques, technology are de designed to work on hazard resistance and the resiliency of our systems. While the non-structural measures are non-physical elements, they don't require any physical construction, but they are related to knowledge, practices, or other non-physical elements that we can engineer to make the disasters less impacting, avoiding. These also include policies, laws, awareness, education, training. So, for example, common structural measures for disaster reduction include dams, flood levees, wave barriers, earthquake resistant construction, like physical engineered elements that are put into place to mitigate the risks related to those disasters. While common structural measures include building codes, planning, zoning, research and assessment, information systems, and public awareness program like education program, capacity building. Let's introduce this very important definition that to date is really an important topic for disaster risk management, the green actions. We have been used, we have been engineering for decades, for ages, uh, gray infrastructures. As you see in this table, are structures and mechanical equipment uh, that humans uh, invented and put into place uh, to defend our systems from disasters like walls, levees, dams are significant structural elements that humans design and built to protect, to manage waters, climate hazards and etc. But at the moment uh, we realize uh, that is very important to value the natural capacity of our landscape, of our water systems, or our vegetation systems to help us in uh, not only restoring uh, the value of nature, but also really making actions that are sustainable and preventing and managing and mitigating natural disasters. We introduce the definition of nature-based solutions are actions to protect, sustainably manage and restore natural or modified ecosystems. So in the nature-based solutions, the green infrastructures are green engineered features are not only restoring green spaces, humans engineering green systems to make their ecosystem processes a better and more efficient value for ma managing and mitigating natural disasters. So among the nature based solutions, are how I just defined, we have green infrastructures and blue infrastructures. The green infrastructures are a subset of nature based solutions that intentionally 
will strategically preserve, enhance, or restore elements of the natural systems such as forests or agricultural land. Humans working with forest, green spaces, agricultural land for sustainable and safe management against natural disasters. Green infrastructures are always a subset of nature-based solutions that work with water, with water-based elements of the landscape. Like you have a wetland, or you have a natural storage of water that you manage and use for preventing like flood hazard, for example. And then the hybrid the green infrastructure, which is a combination of the two. And you can see in the right field some examples of green, blue, gray, or hybrid infrastructures. I was uh, saying that this is very important because at the moment, uh, as a geopolitical technical strategy, we have the European Green Deal, we have the do not significant harm DNSH principles, we have the environmental, social and governance ESG, just keep in mind this uh, strategic programs and acronym that are really, really fostering and pushing the use of green strategies, of circular economy, of uh, climate actions based on the use and the value of nature, ecosystem services, to manage our farmlands, to manage our costs, to manage our mountains, forests and watersheds, river wetlands and cities. So I invite you to read this slide and not to also look at the material we put in the share folder of the Charisma training um, activity we are developing in this uh, project so that you can understand how can we use nature to help communities build resilience, resiliency to extreme weather events and climate change, for example. So thanks much for following this uh, set of four lectures on the topic. Really follow the Charisma website and uh, social media and uh, the platform where, where this training course is taking place. And really thanks so much for your attention. Use the contact info for any question you may have and we'll be very glad to follow you and to address your questions. Thanks much.